Once upon a time, there was a merchant and his wife. They had a baby daughter called Jahidi. The man's wife died, and he married another woman. Soon, she had a baby daughter too, the two sisters grew up together. Jahidi was a beautiful girl. She was good and kind. But Jahidi's stepmother did not love her. Jahidi worked hard in the house, but her stepmother never gave her new clothes. Jahidi always fetched the water and carried things home from the market, but her stepmother never gave her good food to eat. Jahidi's sister was an ugly, lazy girl, but her mother loved her. She gave her daughter beautiful white clothes and gold jewelry. Jahidi's sister did not help in the house, or fetch the water, or carry things home from the market. But her mother always gave her the best food to eat. One day, Jahidi's stepmother said to her daughter, My darling, you are a big girl now. Soon we must find a husband for you. Put on your best dress today, and your gold necklace. Go to the market. The young men will be there. They will see you, and they will fall in love with you. We will choose the best one to be your husband, Jahidi's father heard his wife. He called his oldest daughter, Jahidi, you must go with your sister, he said. You must find a husband, too, his wife heard her husband, that stupid Jahidi, she thought. I don't want to find a husband for her. I want to find one for my own dear daughter. Jahidi went to her stepmother. Please, stepmother, she said. My father wants me to go to the market with my sister. He wants me to find a husband, too. But my dress is old and dirty. Will you give me a new one, a new dress? For you? Her stepmother laughed. Do you think I am rich? No, you stupid girl. I have no new dress for you. Go now. Your sister is waiting, Jahidi and her sister walked to the market. Jahidi was sad. No one will talk to me, she thought. My dress is old and dirty. The young men will not look at me. There were many people in the market. Farmers were selling their TEF. Women were selling vegetables. Merchants were selling cloth and pots and shoes. There was a handsome young man at the market, too. He was with his friends. He saw Jahidi and fell in love with her. The young man and his friends came up to the girls, and they began to sing, Who do we like? Who is the best? Here's an ugly girl in a new white dress. We say, No, to her, but we say, Yes, to the beautiful girl in the ugly dress. The young man wanted to talk to Jahidi, but her sister was angry. No, she said. Our mother is waiting for us. Come, Jahidi, we must go home. The two girls went home. Well, said Jahidi's stepmother. What happened at the market? Oh, mother, Jahidi's sister said. The young men were so foolish. They sang, Who do we like? Who is best? Here's a girl in a new white dress. We say, No, to her. But we say, Yes, to her sister in the ugly dress. What? said her mother. That is very strange. Don't worry, my dear. Next week you will go to the market again, and you will wear Jahidi's dress, and she will wear yours. So the next week, the two sisters went to the market again. Now Jahidi was wearing her sister's beautiful white dress and she wore her sister's gold necklace round her neck. 
But her sister was wearing Jahidi's dirty old clothes. The handsome young man and his friends were there waiting for them. They sang, Here comes the girl that we like best, not the ugly girl, in the dirty dress. We say, No, to her, but we say, Yes, to the beautiful girl in the new white dress. The handsome young man came to Jahidi and said, Beautiful girl, who is your father? Who is your mother? I want to come to your house and make you my bride. The two girls went home. Well, said Jahidi's stepmother. What happened today? Mother, said Jahidi's sister. The young men looked only at Jahidi, and the most handsome of them all wants to marry her. I am angry with my sister. I want that young man for myself. Her mother was very angry. That girl, Jahidi, will always bring us trouble, she said. I don't want her here in my house any more. Listen, daughter. Take your sister to the forest. Cut branches from the trees to make a place for a bride. Tell your sister to climb up into the tree. While she is in the tree, put some laga bark near the river. In the evening, she will go to the river to fetch water. She will slip on the bark and fall into the water. And that will be the end of her. So the sisters went to the forest. Jahidi climbed up a tree. She was happy, my bridegroom will come for me, she thought. He is handsome and strong, and he loves me. She began to cut branches to make the place for the bride. Her sister picked up some laga bark and ran to the river. She put the bark down by the water. Then she went back to the forest. Jahidi, she called. Come down from the tree, you lazy girl. My mother is calling you. She wants water. You must go to the river and fill your pot. Jahidi came down from the tree. She left the branches in the forest and ran home. She picked up her pot and hurried to the river. But her feet slipped on the laga bark, and she fell into the water. Now, a wicked demon lived in the river. He jumped up and caught Jahidi. She could not escape from him. You are mine, now, the demon said, and I will never let you go. Jahidi's father, the merchant, was traveling far away from home. The next day, when he returned, he said to his wife, where is my daughter? Where is my dear Jahidi? I don't know, his wife said. She ran away, and she didn't come back. Then the bridegroom came to the merchant's house, with all his friends. Where is Jahidi? he said. Where is my beautiful bride? I don't know, said Jahidi's stepmother. She went out, and she didn't come home. Jahidi's father was very sad. He did not eat. He did not drink. He could not sleep at night. His wife said, Eat, husband. Drink, my dear, Jahidi will come. She will soon be here. But her husband answered, I will not drink, I will not eat, I want my child, my daughter sweet. Then he said to his wife, Go and call my daughter. Call Jahidi. Tell her to come home to her father. So Jahidi's stepmother went down to the river. She stood by the water, and she called out, Jahidi, your father will not eat, he will not drink, he sits at home, why are you hiding? Why do you wait? Your mother is calling. Come, child. Come, she did not see Jahidi, but she heard her voice, my mother is dead, but I know you, you wanted to kill me, and drown me too, tell my father to drink and eat, he has lost Jahidi, his daughter sweet, Jahidi's stepmother went home to her husband, well, wife, he said. 
Where is my daughter? She will not come, his wife said. She is a wicked girl. She does not respect you. She said, Tell my father to drink and eat, Jahidi has friends that she wants to meet, her husband did not believe her, what have you done to my daughter, he said. Go and find her, and bring her to me, I will not drink, I will not eat, I want Jahidi, my daughter sweet, the girls from the village heard the merchant's words. They all went to the river, Jahidi. Your father calls you again, he will not rest. He waits at home, we are your sisters. We are your friends, come home with us. Jahidi, come, but Jahidi called out from the middle of the river, I have no mother. My father's wife brought me here to take my life, tell my father he must forget his poor Jahidi, his daughter sweet. The village girls went back to Jahidi's father. Your daughter cannot come home, they told him. You must forget her. Jahidi's bridegroom could not forget his bride. He thought about her every day. She was my bride, my darling, and I have lost her, he thought sadly. One day, he was taking his father's cattle to the river. Suddenly, he saw a girl in the water. She was thin and sad. She was crying, Jahidi. My love. Is that you? The young man called out. Why are you there, in the river? Why don't you come out? I can't come out, answered Jahidi. A demon has caught me. His magic holds me here. How can I help you? asked her bridegroom. What can I do? I am growing weak and thin here in the river, said Jahidi. Bring me some food, I have food with me here, cried her bridegroom. I will throw it to you. Catch it, Jahidi, he threw her some food. Jahidi caught it and ate it, I will come again tomorrow said her bridegroom. I will save my food and give it to you. So the next day, the bridegroom did not eat his food. He kept it and took it to Jahidi. He gave her his food again on the third day, and on the fourth, now Jahidi was growing stronger and fatter, but her bridegroom was becoming thin and weak. What is wrong with you? his father asked him. Are you sick? No, father, I am not sick, Jahidi's bridegroom said. Then why don't you eat? asked his father. What are you doing with your food? I can't tell you, Jahidi's bridegroom said. My son, said his father. I am your father. If you have a problem you must tell me. Perhaps I can help you, at last, Jahidi's bridegroom said. The demon took my bride, my dear Jahidi. Now she is in the river, and she can't come out. Every day I take her my food. She eats it, and she is growing stronger, but now I am thin and weak, my poor boy, said his father. You must save Jahidi. Go to the river again today. Say to her, Jahidi, I want to save you. How can I do it? So the bridegroom went back to the river. He called to Jahidi, Jahidi, are you there? At once, she came out of the water. Jahidi, I want to save you, the bridegroom said. How can I do it? She answered, my master, the demon, is always hungry. Kill a bull and cut up the meat. Bring a big piece to the river and throw it in. The demon will see the meat. He will jump up to catch it. Then he will let me go, and I will run out of the water. The bridegroom went back to his father. He told him everything. Take my biggest bull, his father said. 
kill it, and throw the meat to the demon. So the bridegroom killed the bull, and he took the meat to the river. He threw it into the water. At once, the demon jumped up to catch the meat. Hungrily, he began to eat it. Come, Jahidi, come, her bridegroom shouted, Jahidi began to run out of the water. But another demon was waiting near the edge of the river. This demon was blind. Meat! I can smell meat, he shouted. He heard Jahidi, and he jumped on her. She pushed him away. His hand caught her breast and tore it off, but Jahidi ran out of the river, into the arms of her bridegroom, my beautiful girl, he cried. You are safe at last, I am safe, but I am not beautiful now, Jahidi said. Look at me. I have only one breast, you are beautiful to me, said her bridegroom, so Jahidi and her bridegroom were married and they had many children, and lived happily ever after. I was a writer. I wrote books. I write now too, but nobody knows about it because nobody can see me now. This is my story. Last January, I decided to write a novel. I needed a quiet place, so I left my home and found a little room. It was nice and quiet, just a room for a writer. I began to work on my book and felt very happy. But then things began to happen, strange things. One day, when I returned to my room from a cafe, I found that my pen had disappeared. I looked for it everywhere, on the table, on the floor, on my chair, and then on the table again. It wasn't anywhere. That night another strange thing happened. I was in bed and the room was very quiet. Suddenly I heard a voice, a man's voice, who's there? I cried, there was no answer and there was nobody in the room, it all seemed very strange and I didn't know what to do, after that strange thing started to happen every day. But I had to finish my book, so I stayed there. The room was very small. There were not many things in it, only a bed, a table, and a chair. And there was an old mirror on the wall. And then, one day, I looked in the mirror and, I saw him. The other man. It wasn't me. This man had a beard, but I didn't, I closed my eyes and looked again. This time, I saw my face in the mirror, nonsense. I thought, there couldn't have been another man, but that day I didn't work on my book, I couldn't. I went for a walk, and when I came back I looked in the mirror again. There wasn't another man. It was my face. But it didn't make me happier. When I went to bed, I couldn't sleep, I'll leave this place tomorrow, I thought. And after that, I fell asleep, I had a terrible dream that night. The other man was standing by my bed and speaking to me. You'll never leave this place, he said. You'll always stay with me, I woke up in a cold sweat. I'm leaving this place. I won't stay here any longer. I said to myself, I jumped out of bed and quickly put all my things in a suitcase. Then I looked in the mirror and froze on the spot. I couldn't see the other man in the mirror. But I couldn't see my face in the mirror either. There was no face, I tried to shout, but no sound came out of my throat. I had no voice, and then I saw him. I saw the other man, the man with the beard. But he wasn't in the mirror. He was sitting at the table, with my pen in his hand. He was writing my book with my pen. 
I was angry and I tried to speak. But I couldn't, because I had no voice, the other man was silent. He went on writing with a smile on his face, suddenly, there was a knock at the door, and I heard a friend's voice, Are you there? my friend asked. I want to see you, I was very happy. My friend will help me, I thought. But I couldn't move. The other man went to the door and opened it. Come in, he said to my friend. Come and see my room. I'm writing my book. My friend came into the room, but he didn't see me. He smiled at the other man. Oh, you've grown a beard. I tried to speak again and again, but I couldn't. My friend didn't see me and he couldn't hear me. He only saw the other man, that is my story. The other man has my room. And he also has my face and my voice. He will finish my book, too, but the other man doesn't know one thing. I can write, I can tell my story. And I'm telling it to you. Aaron and the hummingbird lived near a big lake. They were good friends, but they were very different. Heron was tall, strong, and slow, and hummingbird was small and very fast. Heron and hummingbird loved to eat fish from the lake. Heron liked the big fish, and hummingbird liked the little fish. One day hummingbird said to Heron, there are not enough fish in the lake for you and me. Let's have a race. Let's fly for four days to the old tree near the river. The winner of the race can have all the fish in the lake, but the loser must never eat fish again. Now Hummingbird was much faster than Heron, and he knew he could win the race easily. But Heron was a kind bird, and he didn't like to say no to anyone. That's a good idea, he said, the next morning, Heron and Hummingbird met at the lake. Good morning, my friend, said Heron, you think you can fly faster than me, do you, Heron? Hummingbird laughed. Remember, we are going to fly to the old tree near the river. The winner of the race can have all the fish in the lake, but the loser must never eat fish again. Are you ready? Heron, said Hummingbird. Three, two, one. Go, he cried, and the two birds flew up above the lake. Heron flew slowly, but he didn't look down. His long wings never stopped moving. He just flew and flew. Hummingbird flew very fast, but he was soon bored. Every time he saw a pretty flower, he flew down and drank from it. Sometimes, when Hummingbird drank from the flowers, Heron flew ahead of him. When Hummingbird saw this, he flew quickly after Heron, and soon he was in front again. Why don't you fly faster? Hummingbird called to Heron. Then you can drink from the flowers too. Hummingbird looked at Heron behind him and laughed. I'm going to win this race easily he thought, flap, 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 flutter, flutter, flutter. All day the birds flew. Heron flew slowly, but he was strong and he never stopped. Hummingbird flew fast, but he went up and down, up and down, at last evening came. Hummingbird was tired so he found a good place in a tree and stopped for the night. Heron is very slow, he thought. I can soon fly ahead of him in the morning, and soon he fell asleep. Heron didn't stop, flap. 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 He flew all night, the big white moon shone on the trees below, but Heron didn't look down. He just flew and flew. Good morning, my friend, said Heron. Hummingbird flew ahead and looked back, 
aren't you tired, Heron? He laughed. I had a very good sleep, and I'm in front of you again, flap. 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 All the second day, the big heron flew, and he never stopped or looked down, flutter. 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 The little hummingbird flew up and down, up and down. He stopped and drank from the pretty flowers, and then he flew ahead of Heron once more. On the second night, hummingbird slept in a tree again, but Heron flew all night, and on the third day, hummingbird flew in front of Heron again. He drank from the flowers and then fluttered near the big bird. Aren't you tired, Heron? he called. Don't you want to stop? On the third night, Hummingbird stopped in another tree. We're nearly at the river now, he thought. In the morning I can fly ahead of Heron. I can fly to the old tree and win the race. Then I can eat all the fish in the lake. Heron was tired. But he felt a little wind on his wings, and he didn't stop. He just flew all night, flap, 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 hummingbird slept well again, and the next morning he felt good, I'm going to win the race today, he laughed, and he flew after Heron, but it was very windy, and hummingbird couldn't fly well. He fluttered his wings faster and faster, but the wind pushed him back, where's Heron, he thought. But he couldn't see Heron anywhere. Hummingbird saw the old tree. The old tree near the river and at the top of the tree, he saw. Heron. Heron was the winner, I am much faster than you. Hummingbird said to Heron. How did you get here? How did you win? I flew all night, said Heron. You drank from the flowers and you slept. But I felt the wind coming and I never stopped. This morning I arrived at the old tree. I'm tired and hungry, but I'm the winner, so after that, Hummingbird never ate fish again. He flew around the pretty flowers all day and drank from them. He and Heron were still good friends. But now Heron had all the fish in the lake. He was very happy, and this is why now, herons everywhere eat fish, and hummingbirds drink from flowers.